Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome to another Top 10 Lego Minifigure video. The show where we count down the best of the best minifigures from every year of Lego. We kicked things off in 2021 and we moved our way slowly backwards until now we have finally reached the year of 2017. Where we'll be counting down the Top 10 Best Non-Collectible Minifigure, aka the Standard Retail Figures of 2017. Because I felt like it was important to split this up into two different categories, CMFs and non-CMFs. CMFs. And so I do want to note that this is of course just my opinion. I do want to hear yours as well. So let me know down in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Or do you think anything was missing from this list? And so without further ado, let's just jump right into number 10. So our number 10 pick was picked for one very simple reason. Frankly, it just looks really cool. There's nothing particularly technically impressive about the figure, it doesn't really use dual molding or side arm printing, it just looks, again, really, really cool. So this is the Samurai VXL or Samurai X minifigure from 2017. It was from the Ninjago Hands of Time wave, which was not a very well received season of Ninjago, but it did give us some of the best Ninjago figures we have ever gotten, mostly because a lot of the designs for season 7 of Ninjago were recycled cancelled concepts from the Ninjago movie itself particularly in the Vermilion Snake Army. This figure though was all new, and it is intended to depict, spoilers, Pixel's form of Samurai X in the seventh season of the show. One thing I really do love about this figure is the mask in particular. I really enjoy the way that the visor is set up to interface with the helmet. It's got basically this singular visor, but it feels very high-tech and sci-fi, not to mention an excellent blend of different metallic colors from silver to metallic gold, and all mixing well together with the dark blues and the blacks of the main color scheme of the figure. I think that the color scheme in general for this figure is probably among the best that we've ever seen for the Samurai X figure herself. It hasn't really gotten better than this in my opinion, and even recent versions and attempts at making Samurai X figures still haven't really lived up to the mysterious quality that really makes this figure very special. Of course, the color scheme is what makes it really stand out, and it does actually have two different sides to the head itself. If you actually open the helmet up and flip the head around, you'll notice that you have one of the larger visor sides, but you also have some of the eyes poking through. Still concealing the identity very well, but just showing enough so you can maybe guess who's behind the mask. All in all, really the only reason why this character is so low on the list is because I feel like it was just outdone by quite a few other characters in the year. 2017 was a fantastic year for minifigures, and since this is number 10, we are just getting started. So with that, let's now move on to number 9. Coincidentally, number 9 is also an entrant from LEGO Ninjago, although specifically this is from the LEGO Ninjago movie. In the second half of 2017, we got the LEGO Ninjago movie, which featured a brand new redesigned version of Garmadon. Gone were the standard forearms that he normally had, he had a brand new armor piece this time which incorporated the forearms, as well as a full-on newly molded headpiece, weapon, as well as a full-on cape accessory. So this is a really nicely detailed figure for a number of reasons, especially because it truly breathed new life into the Garmadon character. I really love the fantastically ornate headdress, which honestly could work even outside of Ninjago. It's just a really well done samurai headdress, and actually thankfully was recolored as recently as 2021 for the LEGO video theme. The anchor-like weapon that he has is quite good, although that was pretty much only exclusive to the collectible minifigure series, but what makes this particular version of Garmadon really stand out is the very nicely detailed specialized cloak that he wears. It's very similar to the graduation cloak from the collectible minifigure all the way back many years ago, but of course it's much longer to accommodate his longer body, and I really do like the way it looks both in the movie as well as on the figure, and I wish that more iterations of the movie version of the Garmadon figure actually had this cloak. In terms of what's below the new armor piece, which is a very good piece, to be honest, the torso and legs are very, very similar to the older 2011 version of Garmadon, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I definitely think they could have used a little bit more detail. But what I do love is the amount of detail featured on the front of the torso for the armor plating for the four arms. I think that the armor plating, especially on the front of the armor, is done really well, particularly in the metallic silver printing interlaced with different lines in rows of armor, very similar to an actual traditional samurai outfit. All in all, this is a very well done figure which introduced two brand new molds, technically three if you want to count the weapon, and four if you count the cape as a new piece as well. So a ton of really nice new pieces here. 
Again, really only so low on the list because it doesn't really do anything technically special in terms of side printing or dual arm molding, but it is a very nicely designed villain. And with that, we can now move on to number 8. And for number 8, we actually have a figure from the license category. Despite Pirates of the Caribbean 5 being one of the weaker movies in the franchise, it was able to give us one of the coolest ships in LEGO set form, the Silent Mary, which featured a fantastic complement of crew, with this particular figure, Officer Magda, standing out as being one of the best figures that LEGO did for the year of 2017. And that really boils down to one major technical innovation. As you can very clearly see, this figure has a very transparent leg. Now we had gotten transparent colored legs before, specifically transparent blue for Chima, we got transparent green for Ninjago, but never had we ever gotten a fully transparent clear leg. And what I have to say is that the production value on this leg is really, really good. Since the figure was produced in 2017 before LEGO actually changed the type of plastic that they do for clear pieces, the piece is fully transparent, it's not even translucent, there's no sort of milky film on it, you can just very clearly see right through the leg, and that is easily the most impressive aspect of the figure to me. Of course, the rest of the figure isn't bad either. I really like the character design on the figure in particular, especially with the head being fully transparent as well, but still featuring some bits of bone and skin flaking off. But what I really find cool is the way that the leg transitions from being clear all the way to the black. It's just a really cool character design to have the tattered cloak go kind of alongside the upper part of the clear leg and then go on to fully the black leg. And as you can see, he really stands out compared to the rest of the crew here on my Pirates of the Caribbean wall and even kind of outshines the main villain himself. But there are still many more figures left to go because besides the clear leg, there wasn't really anything else special about it. And with that, we can move on to number seven. And at number 7, we return to LEGO original themes. This is the Rogel from LEGO Nexo Knights. So, the most important thing that this figure introduced was a brand new dual molded leg component, which actually we saw reused a couple other times in the dark tan and light tan color, specifically for the Sandman character from Marvel Super Heroes. Here though, it's done really well because you can see a nicely detailed blend of purple as well as transparent blue, which truly makes the figure stand out and feel completely unique compared to many other of LEGO's original villains. While the purple, gray, and light blue color scheme was not everyone's favorite villain color scheme for the Nexo Knights faction's second year, I personally really liked how a lot of the figures turned out, and this one in particular was one of the standout figures of the wave. While unfortunately the rest of the figure is admittedly not quite as interesting as the lower half, I do actually really like the amount of detail that it includes, including a dual-sided head, featuring just some simple glowing yellow eyes almost similar to a Jawa, as well as more lightning-infused blue eyes with little streaks of lightning streaking away from the eyes which looks really cool. However though, obviously the main attraction here is this amazing dual molded component. It is one of the most intricate components we've ever gotten for really any LEGO minifigure in general. It's just really well produced, especially because you can see little bits of lightning that are literally molded into the transparent blue inner core. It's just a really fascinating piece, and one that I'm very glad LEGO did not abandon after just using it a few times in Nexo Knights or 2017. With that though, we can now move on to our number 6 pick. And coming in at number 6, we actually have another licensed figure from one of the LEGO movies. This is particularly from the LEGO Batman movie, the Harley Quinn figure. Now we got a ton of different versions of Harley Quinn in 2017 for the LEGO Batman movie, but this to be featured in a standard retail set was truly a step above pretty much anything else we have ever seen. Not only does this figure feature dual molded arms, but it also features printing on both sides of the arms as well as printing on both legs, and for one of the first times ever, full printing on half of the skirt piece, which previously was limited to a couple of spots here and there or just being not printed at all. As you can see, the design of the figure is just simply done really well. You can see how the outfit fully features from the top of the torso, kind of going alongside the upper arms being exposed, down to kind of some bracelet-like components that she's wearing on the arms. And what's really cool is it also features this dual-sided head and a specially new dual-molded hairpiece in red and black, which thankfully saw a lot more use outside of just the LEGO Batman movie because it would have been a shame to not use that piece anywhere else. Removing the skirt to get a better look at how the printing works, you can see that the figure works perfectly well even without the skirt, 
I really appreciate how it's kind of a modern update of the original LEGO Harley Quinn figure all the way back in 2007 or 2008, but of course it has a lot more detail, especially the way the printing continues along the sides of the legs. There are a lot of colors in play, from red to black to gray, and it actually pulls it off really well, including even some ripped portions of the tights, which surprisingly have the white pattern of the skin printed on fairly well. It's not perfect, but it's better than a lot of LEGO's other attempts, and that's honestly good enough for me. The hammer itself also featured a brand new print for the Technic Cylinder with a hole through it, which was a really nice thing to get. And all in all, this is just a truly fantastically detailed, almost collectible minifigure level of detail included in a standard retail set. And moving on to number 5, it's really no surprise that we have another figure from the LEGO Batman movie, although technically this is basically a Wizard of Oz figure. As you can see, this is one of the flying monkeys from the Wizard of Oz, which was featured in the second part of the LEGO Batman movie wave, which was kind of covering spoilers for the later part of the film, which pulled in villains from all different Warner Brothers franchises. The figure here reuses the centaur legs from the collectible minifigure series to give it some digitigrade legs in sand blue, which is really cool. We also get the tail piece for typically Lego monkeys and cats and whatnot recolored in sand blue for the first time for this figure, as well as sand blue chima wings, and most importantly, dual molded arms with printing on the sides of the arms and a specially custom dual molded headpiece. Now, the particular figure that I've shown here is the one that is smiling. They actually did two different versions of this figure, one scowling and one smiling. I kind of count them as the same figure, to be completely honest. They're very, very similar in design. It's really just the difference in the expression. So I just kind of randomly picked this particular one that was smiling. But as you can see here, it's just a really well done figure, especially compared to the original source material. I think it does a really good job of replicating the Wizard of Oz flying monkey figure while making it truly feel like a deluxe figure that, again, almost feels like it came out of the collectible minifigure series. And while there are a few things that I feel like maybe could have been improved stylistically, obviously the jacket in the sand blue color is very, very plain, and especially as you turn the figure to the back, it has a very plain back of the torso, they were working with what limitations they had, especially considering the source material. That being said, one major flaw of the Digitigrade legs is, unfortunately, minifigures using them cannot sit down. As you can see, you can only bend the leg forwards to a certain degree, which I do feel like is a pretty big flaw for the way the legs were designed. But I guess that LEGO just simply could not get the specialized curve of the leg without making a few compromises here and there. All in all, this is a really great figure with a lot of really cool accessories to it, and some excellent printing on the arms and dual molding. There are just a few more that barely managed to outshine even this figure, both in terms of what personally just interests me and also in terms of production value. And so with that, we have wrapped up number five, and we can now move on to our number four pick on the list. It almost feels unfair at this point, but continuing our streak of LEGO Batman movie figures, we have yet another consecutive Batman movie figure in a row. This is the Poison Ivy figure from the first half of the Batman movie sets. Now this is one of the best designs LEGO has ever done for any one of Batman's rogues gallery, and is obviously the best LEGO Poison Ivy figure that they have pretty much ever done. First of all, the figure introduces a brand new hairpiece featuring the flower in white kind of painted on the side there, but it also features leaves entangled with the red hair, which is a really nice detail. They had printed some leaves before on original existing Lego hair pieces, but this is truly special and really is completely unique to the Poison Ivy character. I also really like that the expression is somewhat influenced by Poison Ivy's live action appearances in the original Batman movies, as well as of course having dual molded arms having the tops of the arm kind of exposed, while she's wearing these long kind of lower length arm gloves in dark green, really just ties the whole figure together, including some printing on the side of the arm as well. Now, the figure, in addition to including the hair piece, which actually kind of mimics different rose patterns, especially if you look at the way the hair is curled, so that's another really great design feature, has a very specially cut skirt as well. So you can see the fabric skirt element. The legs are probably the only somewhat uninteresting part of the figure, but that's really only just compared to literally everything else about it being absolutely outstanding. This to me is just fantastic character design, and I really appreciate the amount of thought and effort that went into designing a character like this. 
In fact, if you take a look at the making of the Lego Batman movie book, you can see just how much effort went into designing every single one of the villains. This one was absolutely no exception because they really iterated so many different designs of the villains before they finally decided on the best iteration. So this was the result of a lot of different experimentation and design efforts by the Lego group and Lego designers and concept artists, and I think that work absolutely paid off because what you see before you is probably one of the best iterations of Poison Ivy ever, and easily one of the best Batman villains we've ever gotten. And here she is next to all of the other older and newer versions of Poison Ivy we've gotten to date, and yeah, I think the quality there just speaks for itself. Just look at how good this figure is compared to the rest. But with that, we can now move on to number three and breaking away from the Lego Batman movie, we have the first and not last big fig on the list. This is the Hulk big fig from Thor Ragnarok. So this was probably one of the coolest big figs we have ever gotten to date. Featuring the armor that Hulk wore on Sakaar, it introduced a brand new dual molded arm with the blue armor with a dark brown leather coating on the arm. Of course, the head itself has a very nicely detailed silver and red helmet. And while the rest of the figure is fairly plain in terms of being just a standard Hulk figure with black pants, it's really just the arm and helmet that make this figure so, so cool. And the accessories are also built up to a fantastic degree. This came from an era where LEGO was really putting their full effort into making MCU Marvel minifigure designs, not to say that they haven't done it for more of the recent Marvel movies, but this is just on another level of detail compared to especially what we're used to today from standard new released Marvel movies. I am a big, big fan of how this big fig turned out, and honestly, it would be at the top of the list if it wasn't outshone by just a couple other figures. All in all though, this is probably one of my favorite big figs ever. It may actually be my second favorite big fig ever. Spoilers, you may see my first favorite big fig later on in this list, but all in all, it's a fantastic design. The white and gray printing on the front of the chest really makes it stand out. And of course, that helmet and that arm make it skyrocket above the rest. With that though, we can now move on to number two, where we make a return to Lego Nexo Knights, another original Lego theme. So for number two, I've picked General Garg. So you may be wondering why exactly is this figure so high up? Now, to be completely honest, I simply just think the figure looks cool. Sure, it isn't as nicely produced as some of the other figures. It doesn't have dual molding. It doesn't have side arm printing or whatnot. I just think it looks really cool. And what this figure actually introduced were three brand new molds exclusive to Nexo Knights. You have the headpiece mold, the armor piece mold, and most importantly, the brand new dual molded black and transparent blue wing element, which is probably one of my favorite wing elements that LEGO has pretty much ever done in the history of LEGO wing pieces. This is truly a formidable look for a villain, and I really do wish that General Guard got a lot more focus in the TV show because he is such a cool design for a villain to only really be used just kind of sparingly in terms of the show. Now, of course, as you can see here, the wings can flap back and forth. They are really well produced, especially with the transparent blue inner lining. And there were a few other gargoyles produced for the Nexo Knights lineup, which we will be taking a look at later on in the video. But specifically for this one, I just really love this figure design because it's very simple. The only two colors really used on this are black and light blue. Sure, there's a little bit of white and the eyes are yellow, but honestly, I feel like the limited color palette really adds to the sinister appeal of this figure. He really does feel like something you would see maybe lurking in the shadows, a very shadowy design, and especially against, say, a black background, it would really make the eyes and light blue aspects of the figure pop. I think it's really good character and figure design in general to have a being mostly made out of black stones just being barely kept alive by electricity coursing through his body. I just think that's a really cool figure concept and eventual execution in general. And especially compared to a lot of the other Nexo Knights villains of the year, you can see just how hard it was to pick this one favorite because there were a lot of great designs like the Harpy here, as well as the standard gargoyle, but ultimately I think the black and light blue color scheme won out over the dark gray and purple and blue color scheme just because of how simple and effective it is. But with that, we can now move on to our number one pick for the best 2017 non-collectible minifigure series, minifig or big fig. Now that probably gives it away already, but as you can see here, 
our number one figure is Killer Croc from the Lego Batman movie, making him the fourth movie character from the Lego Batman movie to appear on this list, which really just goes to show how that theme absolutely dominated minifigure design for the 2017 year. Now this is such a cool design, and one thing that I really love about this is that it blends both classic and modern LEGO techniques. Obviously you can see that the headpiece is directly inspired from the very first original LEGO crocodile mold. It is using literally the same exact upper crocodile jaw, and even the bottom jaw is pretty much spliced from that original mold. It's reusing the Rancor hands from the 2012 LEGO Star Wars figure, which was a really great piece, even the arms are reused there, and really the only new thing here is the main torso. What I do especially love about this figure though is just how much you're able to get this into different poses. Not only can you bend each of the figures as well as the chain can be wrapped around characters and of course you can open and close the jaw, but most importantly, you can actually move the head up and down. So jaw opens and shut like so, but the entire neck can look up to make him actually swim through the water or be looking upwards and downwards. This to me is one of the coolest big fig designs they have ever done in LEGO format. It is easily my favorite big fig we've ever gotten, and that probably will never be unseated for a long, long time unless LEGO comes up with something even crazier than this. It is truly the most deluxe big fig we've ever gotten, featuring dual molding for the headpiece. We've got the blue shorts, the brown belt, a full on crocodile tail, again, in the style of the original LEGO crocodile piece, which gives it extra bonus points, all wrapped together in a fantastic package. One thing I really like is how much building actually went into making this figure. It's not just a standard big fig where you really just slap on the arms and hands and call it good. No, you actually had to put the upper jaw on, you had to put in each of the claws, each of the fingers is a separate piece, and you can really just get a lot of articulation out of this particular figure. And best of all, because he's reusing the Ranker hands, the hands are specifically designed to hold another LEGO figure. So here he is holding Officer Magda from earlier on the list, and can really just pretend he is going and eating LEGO minifigures. So what a cool character design. I love how much articulation you can get out of it, and easily this was the best figure that LEGO produced throughout the entire year of 2017. And I'm even including collectible minifigures here. This is simply just the best. And with that, we have pretty much summed up our look at the top 10 2017 non-CMF figures, ending with this fantastic entry in the Killer Croc Big Fig. All right, and with that, we have summed up my personal favorite, and in my opinion, the best minifigures that were not collectible minifigs in 2017. Again, this is just my opinion, and I do want to hear yours, so let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree, and which ones are your personal favorite minifigs. Stay tuned for next time where we count down the best collectible minifigs of 2017, and until then, I'll see you again very soon. Subscribe to Duck Breaks for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon, and bye-bye for now.